is Theranosmics the future of nuclear medicine? My name's Michael Hoffman, and it's my absolute pleasure to present this EANM plenary lecture to you today. 15 years ago, I was wandering the streets of Istanbul at my first international conference, the EANM 2005 meeting. At that time, I was three quarters of the way through my nuclear medicine training. There were only two PET CT scans in Melbourne, where I live, a city of over 5 million people. Today, there are over 20. Nuclear medicine has evolved substantially. I took lots of photos of slides, as you do when you're young at an international meeting. And these were my two favorite slides of the meeting. An outcome of a patient treated with lutetium dotatate neuroendocrine tumor, and an extraordinary image of gallium dotatate PET-CT. In order to predict the future, we need to learn from our past. Dr. Saul Hertz is one of the Theranostic pioneers, uh, introducing radioactive iodine for treating thyroid cancer. Here's a record of the first 20 cases he was able to cure with radioactive iodine. Barbara Hertz, Saul's daughter, flew out to the Theranostics World Congress in Melbourne in 2016, and I had the pleasure to meet her. So I caught up with her recently and asked her if she would say a few words for us at the virtual meeting. In 1946, my father said, my new research project is in cancer of the thyroid, which I believe holds the key to the larger problem of cancer in general. Theranostics is the origin and future of nuclear medicine. In the 1940s, Dr. Hertz was already curing patients with metastatic thyroid cancer. On the top line, we can see the date that these traces were first used in humans or published, and in bigger writing is the date of FDA approval. We can see often 15 to 20 years or more between initial use and widespread adoption. We need to try and work faster in the future. My interest in theranostics grew out of using lutetium dotatate to treat patients with neuroendocrine tumors. Back in 2013, I saw this man with a large pancreatic primary, extensive hepatic metastases, biopsy confirming a high grade neuroendocrine tumor. He progressed after three cycles of carboatopocyte chemotherapy. And I was present at the tumor board meeting where we were debating the best option for this patient. I put forward the idea of lutetium dotatate and we proceeded to treat him. And after four cycles, he had an extraordinary response with 99% reduction in tumor burden, beautifully seen on these dotatate PET scans. And over the last seven years, he's had a relapsing remitting course, but he remains alive and well today after more than 11 cycles of lutetium dotatate, more than 100 gigabecrels. So we're able to achieve some truly extraordinary outcomes with our treatments. Lutetium dotatate set the scene for using radioligands or small molecules rather than antibodies or other approaches. And more recently, my research has focused on using PSMA, prostate-specific membrane antigen, targeted small molecules. This is our image of the year from 2018, showing the eight best responders in our 50 patient series. What you might not know is that this image was rejected by Lancet Oncology. They accepted our paper, but they said, please remove this image. It's a little bit anecdotal. And it highlights the different way us in the nuclear medicine world think compared to our medical oncology colleagues. They want data, waterfall plots, Kaplan-Meier curves. That's what they are interested in. Here's our waterfall plot from our 50 patient prospective study showing a PSA over 50% response in 64% of men. But even more than these single centre trials, oncologists want multi-centre randomised evidence. So we went on to perform the therapy trial. Initial results presented recently at the ASCO 2020 meeting. Patients randomised to lutetium PSMA in this 200 patient 11 site Australian study had a 66% response rate compared to only 37% of those randomized to carbazitaxel chemotherapy. Practice changing data. And also a real effort of team sites. Oncologists working very closely with nuclear medicine specialists and us working very closely with our radiochemistry 
physicists, pharmacy and clinical trial colleagues. This is the therapy team going out to visit the ANSTO nuclear reactor near Sydney where our lutetium-177 is manufactured. So for those young people, whatever discipline in nuclear medicine you're working in, Theranostics provides really an awesome career pathway. And this transdisciplinary interaction with colleagues is one of the things that will inspire you. Theranostics is a form of precision oncology, real personalised medicine. Our ability to see what we treat is unmatched in medicine. Here a patient with high PSMA expression at most sites, but with the combination of FDG, our ability to visualise extensive liver metastases that are FDG positive, PSMA negative. We also have an ability to quantify what we treat. Here, some of our three time point quantitative spec CT voxel level dosimetry, producing beautiful whole body images of uh, radiation biodistribution. And the red contour is an automated contour around all of tumour. And what we were able to show in our prospective data set was that if the mean tumour dose was less than 10 gray, there were 10 non-responders and only one responder. So I think dosimetry will play a major role in even better personalising our therapies in the future. Now we're working on moving lutetium PSMA from a last line of therapy to a first line of therapy. Here in the lutectomy study, we are taking men with newly diagnosed prostate cancer and giving them one or two cycles of lutetium PSMA prior to proceeding to prostatectomy. In the future, could theranostics be a replacement for surgery or a replacement to radiation oncology? I think it might just be. We need to bear in mind when we look at that image of the air, in our 50 patient study, almost all of those men have died of prostate cancer. So we need to continue to improve our therapies. Fortunately, we have a whole array of different methods by which to achieve this. One of the areas of most interest is using different radio traces, alpha emitters or OJ emitters. And we have a whole variety of different ones to play with, which have different labeling properties, different physical characteristics. We've seen some extraordinary images like this one from University of Heidelberg showing an incredible response in a man treated with actinium-225 PSMA who had progressed after lutetium dotatate. We need to translate this to prospective data and multi-center data. I was really pleased to see this manuscript of lead-212 dotatate at the SNM meeting, a prospective, really well-designed study showing some extraordinary responses. And so what should we do? Should we treat with alpha or beta or a combination of both? We need some better prospective data to help us to determine how to optimally treat our patients. And of course, we have new targets and I'm only gonna show you one today, FAPI, a lot of interest around this target at the moment. Here, one of the first patients treated with lutetium labeled FAPI. Unfortunately, we see washout at delayed time points, which is not a desirable property for a theranostics agent. But FAPI also has extraordinary uptake in inflammatory conditions. And we need to remember the origins of theranostics was benign thyroid disease. And there's possibly a whole array of inflammatory conditions that can be treated with a theranostic approach. And FAPI might just be better in inflammation than malignancy. What do our funding partners and patients think about theranostics? Well, let's look at the Prostate Cancer Foundation annual report from last year. Their enterprise identified precision radiopharmaceuticals as the number one, the top investment priority to make a difference to the lives of prostate cancer men in the next 15 to 20 years. And Susan Schaeffer, the head of oncology in Novartis said, Nuclear medicine has the opportunity to become an established partner in the therapy of cancer. And for those listening, I would like to encourage you to integrate yourself in to the patient care team. We need to move beyond being a service provider, just injecting the lutetium to becoming engaged at our tumour board meetings, in patient selection, reviewing patients afterwards. Suzanne also said, if there are presentations about radioligand therapies, it should be the nuclear medicine physicians presenting them. So we need to upskill in clinical trial methodology. 
Ken Herman noted in the USA, he would expect around 160 Theranostic centres. So with that, I hope you'll agree that Theranostics is a big part of the future of nuclear medicine. I'd like to thank you for listening and hope that next year we get to meet in person. And maybe you'll even have the opportunity to come visit us in Melbourne at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. Thank you.